Classic Car TV. Well, it's Sunday night. All the results are in from Scottsdale. I'm Rob Sass for Hagerty Classic Car TV with Colin Comer, author of The Complete Book of Shelby, and Dave Kinney, publisher of The Hagerty Price Guide. Dave, you want to start out with the numbers from Barrett-Jackson? Why not? It was uh, quite a sale this year. Uh, Barrett-Jackson today, $5.6 million. Their total of cars sold, 1,291. Total dollars, 90 million point seven. Last year, 69, uh, just a little bit more than 69 million. Uh, they, they very credible results. Uh, Barrett-Jackson has truly uh, made themselves or put themselves back on the map. Yep. Top sale was a Waltz Blue 1948 Tucker. Colin, you want to tell us about that? Well, 2.915 million for a Tucker. That's pretty strong. Says result. it all. Yeah, I think the last one we saw was uh, car RM sold around a million dollars. Yep. Um, I'm not good with math, but 2.9 million is a couple multiples of that. Um, what else can you say about a three million dollar Tucker? Did you ever think you'd see that? Not, uh, not anytime soon, Dave. What do you think? Single sale or is that the I don't, market? I don't know if it's uh, a, they'll be able to replicate it. You know, there's only 47 cars. At any time, there might be three or four in play. They're owned by museums, uh, in trusts. So uh, a lot of them are are pretty well, you know, out of the picture in terms of sales. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see. But you know, when somebody gets word of a three million dollar Tucker you know, they might decide it's time to sell that asset. So, it, it, you know, I would assume we're going to see one or two in the next year come to sale. Russo and Steel still auctioning cars today. Dave, do you want to tell us about the numbers there? Yeah, uh, Russo and Steel did 1.2 million today. Now, Sunday's usually always a, a very calm day. Saturday's the big one, and uh, no exception for, for the two auction houses that were here. They, they do a lot less on Sunday. Their total now is uh, $18.3 million for uh, the week. 401 cars sold. Last year, 18.8 million, pretty much the same number uh, each year. Uh, not bad, um, you know, not a lot, of, not showing a lot of growth, but certainly not uh, going backwards. Yep. Colin, top seller at Russo and Steel, a car I know that you're familiar with. Do you want to tell us about it? Yeah, 68 L88 Corvette, uh, four speed car, original motor, big deal in a L88, had paperwork, original motor, um, you know. Big result, 68's usually a deduction in the Corvette world. L88's are a little immune to that just because of the rarity. Yep. Um, last car L88 Roadster we saw sell was in the mid fives, so I mean, obviously they're on the move again. Yep, well, let's talk about how special that car was. Now on paper, it doesn't look like that special of a car, rated at five horsepower less than the 427, 435 horse car, but there's a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of, of uh, tomfoolery going on there in the rated horsepower. Well, they knew that guys would run down the option list and pick the highest horsepower because GM really didn't want. They they had to make it a production option for racing, so um, they figured all the guys would look at 435 and not want to pay the 800 dollars for the 430 horsepower motor. Um, not a streetable engine, 12 and a half to one compression, needed race gas, um, just not a very uh, user-friendly automobile and not something GM wanted to warranty a lot of. Yeah, and in fact, uh, they don't like to idle very much. This one overheated in the staging line? This one proved that LED Corvettes cannot be idled around a parking lot as it puked coolant all the way into the tent at uh, <laughs> Russo and Steel. They cleaned it up, put a little more water in, ran over the block, it was fine, but they are not a low speed uh, going to the grocery store car. Yeah. Dave, you want to give us a quick summary on uh, the other auction companies that finished earlier in the week? Sure, we can start with uh, Gooding, $39.8 million. Now that reflects one post uh, block sale that was posted today. So that means 116 out of 118 cars uh, uh, sold. Total for last year, 35 million, so there are 4 million. Uh, 800,000 above last year. They had an interesting top sale as well. Colin, you want to tell us about that? Yeah, Alloy uh, Mercedes 300 SL going, 4.62 million. Um, nobody knew how to peg the car, even Gooding didn't know how to peg mm -hmm. the car. It's been so long since we've seen one in the market. Uh, they had it pegged at 2.5 to 3 million, I think. Obviously, 4.62 is a strong result against the estimate. Um, you know, car doesn't come up for sale that often. One hits the market, it's the right one, and that's the result. And what a spread though between a regular steel gull wing that you can still probably in some places buy for six eighty, seven hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. and this car for four million dollars more. I can't remember the last time that we saw anything like that in the marketplace. Well it's an exclusivity factor. There's a lot of 300 SL gull wings out there comparatively speaking and uh, you know the alloy is the ultimate so yep. um, it's the L88 of the 300 SL crowd. <laughs> 
<laughs> Pretty good analogy. Dave, should we move on to RM briefly? Sure, RM, $24.7 million uh, this year. 120 uh, cars sold of 140 offered. Uh, 2011, $31 million. So that's down quite a bit, but they did have quite a few less cars on offer. Um, you know, in, in some ways there was, a, there was a, a lack of a few superstar cars, maybe just uh, not as many as in past years. So uh, that accounted for part of it. Uh, but there was their top seller, which was a Ferrari 410 Super America. Yep, and we talked about that car quite a bit early in the week. It was the, uh, the Greg Garrison car. Interesting history there, and the bidders responded, although kind of a polarizing, controversial-looking 410 Super America. Well, not all the cars here this weekend were seven-figure cars. Dave, you want to talk about bottoms in silver briefly? Well, uh, you know, every auction has, uh, you know, has cars in the $20,000 or $40,000 range. Bottoms had them all over the place. They had some, uh, but they had some, some cars in the uh, million dollar range as well. Um, but Bottoms, first time out, $5.7 million. They're at the Western Kierland Resort. Very, very nice venue. Uh, it was a fun auction to go to and a very nice preview party. Um, they're here to stay. Um, so that's good to see. And of course, silver, perennial favorite of all of ours. It's the home of the, uh, the five, ten, fifteen, and twenty thousand dollar car. Although they did do a ninety thousand dollar car yesterday. Traditionally, they have a sale that runs through Sunday. This year, they cut it off a, a day early, so they were just Friday and Saturday. Their total, two point nine million dollars, one hundred and seventy five cars sold against last year's three point four million. Uh, once again, fewer cars though. Yeah, I have to say though, we haven't been talking a whole lot about bargains this weekend, but Bottoms had probably one of the most notable ones with the Shelby GT500 KR. Colin? Yeah, they had a, a Highland Green 4-speed uh, 16 half Shelby KR sold for low 60s. Yeah, 67,000. Supposed to be a nice original, I did not inspect the car, a nice original car, original engine. I mean, $60,000 plus the fee, that's certainly in the bargain column. Yeah, somebody went home with a great deal. Well, we've got final numbers here, Dave. Do you want to give us those? Yeah, we have a $25 million difference uh, this year from last year. We're up $25 million. 2012, $182 million total, 2,100 cars sold. Last year, $157 million, 2,300 cars sold. So we have less cars, more money uh, by the tune of $25 million. Now, part of that was uh, a little bit of that's going to be the bottoms uh, introduction into the market. Some of it, of course, is uh, Barrett Jackson as well. But uh, I think that uh, you know it's a, show, a sign of a very vibrant market right now. Yep. And I remember on Wednesday we pegged this at between 175 and 185 million, so we were right in the middle there. Uh, lucky, right? Sure. <laughs> well, I think we uh, I think we did our math and figured this one out pretty well. So uh, yeah, we're right where we expected it to be, with quite a few surprises coming out of a few of the auction houses, almost like we always have. But uh, uh, I would say the biggest surprises this year came from Barrett Jackson. Yep. Well, that's it for Scottsdale 2012. I'm Rob Sass with Colin Comer and Dave Kinney for Haggerty Classic Car TV.